Good morning. My name is Dr. Jerry Henwood. I'm a retired literacy specialist at Lower Marion High School. Uh, today I have the honor of interviewing at Radnor Studios 21 uh, Major General Walter Lord. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you. And the reason that we're interviewing Major General Lord this morning is that he is the new president of Valley Forge Military Academy and College. And I would like to welcome you to Thank Radnor you. Studios. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you. One of the first questions I have for you, Major Lord, is uh, as the new president of Valley Forge Military, which is a very established uh, school here in the Delaware Valley, what are the goals that you personally have in your the beginning of your tenure? Well, the two most important goals uh, are basically the same as really any school president, regardless of what type of school it is. The first is to ensure that going forward, Valley Forge is on firm financial ground. Uh, and we do that in a couple of ways. Most importantly, and I think what most people think of as traditional fundraising development, uh, finding people who want to invest in our product, in our school. Uh, and then the second goal contributes to that one, and that is raising our enrollment. Uh, today I've got 636 spaces at Valley Forge. We finished last year with 444 cadets, so nearly 200 vacancies. Uh, the good news is this year we'll start the school year with somewhere between 560 and 580 cadets, a significant uptick. Uh, so we're doing well on those two goals. I've got a third goal that's not quite as concrete, a little bit more difficult to get my arms around, uh, and that is to reestablish some of the luster that Valley Forge always had. Uh, over the course of the past 10 or 12 years, we've kind of lost our way. It hasn't been intentional, uh, but I think that some of my predecessors might have struggled with where we fit as a military school in the educational marketplace and started to question whether there is a place for a strict military school like ours. Um, I believe there is. I believe that it produces an incredible result. So I'm now working with our alumni, our cadets, our faculty and staff, and our parents to reestablish those traditions and core values. When you mention traditions and core values, uh, and you mentioned that there had been a, a decline in the enrollment, uh, I'd like to know, what is the mission of Valley Forge? What are some of those traditions and key values? Because when I was growing up in the Delaware Valley, Valley Forge did have an excellent reputation. Uh, but I was, could you mention to us now uh, what you're trying to reestablish? Sure. Our product is a combination of a first-class education and what we call the cadet experience. Uh, and together, they achieve five cornerstones for Valley Forge. The first is academic excellence, always the top priority because we are, at the end of the day, a school. And our cadets have to get good grades in order to be successful. The other four cornerstones, though, are pretty important as well. Uh, physical development, personal motivation, character development, and leadership. And I think that fifth cornerstone, leadership, is a thread that runs throughout the rest of the cornerstones and it's what makes us different. The fact that our student body, our core of cadets, is truly a cadet-led core. We've gotten away from that recently and, and our adult leadership over the years has taken some of the leadership responsibilities away from our cadets and starting this year we are empowering our cadets to lead again because frankly that's why many parents send their sons, and in the college, their daughters, to Valley Forge for leadership, because it is what sets us apart. And one of the things when you mention leadership, is it military leadership, or is it other than, or in addition to, mm -hmm. military leadership? It's a combination of both. Uh, it's a military-style leadership across the Corps of Cadets, uh, so we've got cadet officers and cadet sergeants, just like we do in the military. Uh, but obviously they're not leading their fellow cadets through military type maneuvers uh, or exercises. They're leading them through their daily lives. So for instance, a high school senior might be a cadet captain, company commander, responsible for 60 or 70 of his fellow cadets. And he's truly responsible to lead them from the time they wake up 
to the time they go to bed to make sure they're in the right place, in the right uniform, at the right time, and behaving the way we expect cadets to behave. When you mentioned uh, the leader uh, getting students up, making sure they go to bed on time, is Valley Forge strictly a boarding school? It is not. Uh, we do offer a day student option uh, where cadets will be dropped off for breakfast and they'll go home just prior to study hall. Uh, but we don't normally get very many people taking that option. Some local residents will. Um, and frankly, we don't encourage it because not living at Valley Forge, not having the full cadet experience does take a bit away from the product. I understand. And you yourself are a graduate of Valley Forge Military. I am, 1984 from the college. Right, and in regard to your own background, which is a very distinguished and illustrious one, uh, I would like to mention to the audience that Major General Lord uh, enlisted first in the military, uh, then had experience with the National Guard, uh, has had domestic and international experience, uh, you retired in what official capacity? Uh, you were with the D Defense Department in Washington, D.C., and in down there, what were you doing? I was. I was the executive director of an advisory body called the Reserve Forces Policy Board, uh, a small body that provides advice directly to the Secretary of Defense on all matters pertaining to the seven reserve components of the services. So when you communicate with the student body at Valley Forge Military, and were you one of the speakers at the graduation? I was not. I introduced the guest speaker, Chris Roussos. Okay, because I attended that graduation. And I was very impressed with the, um, uh, uh, the way the students conducted themselves. And when I went into the reception hall, and this will get us to the next question, I was really taken aback by all the military flags and the statues. And I, at that point, I had a question about what is the international student's response to the American flags and the military flags of our country and the busts of all of our leaders, mm -hmm. uh, past leaders? the names of the halls at Valley Forge, Eisenhower Hall, etc. Do you have any idea why international students come to Valley Forge given the climate there? Mm -hmm. uh, well, first I'll address the climate. And it, even for an international student, it, although it's a, a U.S. military tradition uh, with the names of the halls, um, with a lot of British military tradition actually mixed in, uh, we're open to our international students. We're, we're an open community. In fact, if you go into our dining facility where our cadets have their meals, we've got the flags of every nation that has ever been represented by a cadet at Valley Forge. So we make sure they see their own flag as well. And having worked at several points throughout my career in an international environment, I know how important that is. Uh, as far as the reason that an international cadet would come to Valley Forge, I think it's really the same as an American cadet. Uh, they're here to get a little bit more than just an academic education. They know they'll get leadership experience. Um, when I was here as a cadet, about 25 to 30 percent of our core was international. It was really a, a large international population. And having grown up in inner city Philadelphia, uh, the first place I ever met a foreign national was at Valley Forge and they were my plebe brothers as we call each other. Uh, so I got to know cadets from Venezuela and Bahrain and probably 10 or 12 other countries and it enriched my experience. In return they leave our school with much better English language skills and a network of Americans who will grow to be successful in their chosen professions, who they can then work with later on in life. Mm -hmm. That's very important in our global society. It is. Yeah. And um, in terms of the international students, uh, what percentage or how many students would you say are at Valley Forge and from what countries? Today we've got 35 students between our academy, high school and college. 
uh, and they represent 17 countries, four continents. Uh, China, South Korea, Vietnam, Thailand, two European countries, Russia uh, and Spain, a uh, number of South American countries, and a handful of Middle Eastern countries, Bahrain and uh, United Arab Emirates. So it's a pretty wide span. Must they have a certain degree of English language proficiency in order to be admitted to Valley Forge? They don't. It helps a great deal but we do have English as a second language specialists who help them with the language when they arrive. Mm -hmm. And would you say that their adjustment to American society and to Valley Forge uh, generally goes smoothly because of the coursework and any other uh, supports that you offer to them? I think the, the transition goes smoothly mostly because when a new cadet arrives at Valley Forge, they're called a plebe, just as they are at many military schools. They are very highly restricted. They can't leave campus. Every minute of every day is accounted for. They've got academic requirements beyond their coursework that they have to accomplish, like uh, reciting the cadet resolution, which is basically an oath that says, this is how a cadet behaves. Uh, learning our alma mater, memorizing it and singing it, learning the names of every building on campus and what their functions are. So a cadet, regardless of where they're from, gets broken down to this basic level of plebe and they learn to get through it together. So they band together in the face of this adversity, if you mm. will, uh, and the transition is really, uh, it's the same for an American cadet as it is for an international. Uh, this is all quite interesting. Uh, now, in terms of uh, tuition, you have students who can pay the full freight. Mm -hmm. uh, do you offer uh, scholarships or forms of financial assistance to those students who are eligible, who want to come to Valley Forge, but who can't afford it? We do, especially for domestic students. Uh, we have generous scholarship and aid programs. Uh, in fact, next year we anticipate we'll award $11 million in financial aid for students who really want to come to Valley Forge but n might not be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. And where does this money come from? Uh, it comes from donors mostly, uh, people who want to invest in Valley Forge and contribute to us annually. That's at the academy level, and then at the college level, because there are so many college financial aid programs uh, that we help our students tap, uh, things like uh, grants and loans, uh, basically the same places that other schools get their financial aid. Now, the college is a two-year college, is that correct? It is. And uh, how many of the graduates go on to the college level as opposed to a four-year college? Believe it or not, not many. Uh, we'll get a handful each year <clears throat> who will matriculate from our high school to our college, uh, but most go out into other four-year colleges, service academies. Uh, around 5% will enter military service or go directly into the workforce. Um, I'm actually surprised at how few of our high school cadets move on to our, to our own college, um, but obviously we support whatever their goal is following the academy and we help them get there. Mm -hmm. Now in regard to the opportunities and challenges for to achieve your goals that you mentioned earlier in the interview, what challenges do you see as you move forward to meet those goals? I think the biggest challenge is, is overcoming a pair of, of stigma that I think all military schools face and one is you go to a military school if you're a disciplinary problem. If you're a bad boy, that's where mom and dad send you. Um, we do accept cadets each year who may have had minor disciplinary problems at a previous school because we believe in second chances and we think that our structure can help them find the right path. Uh, but we're also pretty selective. There are certain things that we will not tolerate at Valley Forge like violence and drug use. Uh, and the other stigma that we face is that you go to Valley Forge or some other military school if you're preparing to join the military. Uh, and frankly, a 
small fraction of our cadets go on to serve. Uh, in our college, and the number is much higher because we have ROTC, uh, so about 40% of our college cadets go on to serve. But in our academy, our high school, uh, it's less than 1%. They don't come to us to prepare for military service. They come to Valley Forge to prepare for leadership in life. Mm. What's the difference uh, between a military school, because I think you've answered the question, what is the function or role of a military mm -hmm. school in society today, given how you see its goals, but do you think other schools, both private and public, have those same goals, or is Valley Forge uh, different in some way? I think we are different. I, I'm sure there are public schools and, and private non-military schools that talk about leadership, and they, I'm sure they do a great job of, of helping their students learn leadership. But the fact that our cadets are with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and our cadets are placed in positions where they have to display leadership in situations where their peers in other schools don't, uh, I think we just have an opportunity to put a little bit more intensity into that leadership piece of what we teach. Mm -hmm. Now, when you mentioned that enrollment has been going up mm -hmm. and you would like to see full enrollment, uh, how do you think you'll try to achieve that over the next couple of years? We've got to get the word out about who we are at Valley Forge. Um, and our, our admissions counselors, like many, will say we have to go find the students to come here. I put a little twist on that because I don't think we have to go find people. I, I think we have to help them find us. And that may just sound like a, a semantical difference, but, but I think there is a difference. I think uh, putting the word out in the right places that, that Valley Forge is reinstating some of its old traditions and becoming the structured, disciplined environment that many parents want their students to have is going to help us boost our enrollment very quickly. Now, as a graduate of Valley Forge Military, what did Valley Forge do for you personally? Uh, it's funny you ask that because I just met with all of our plebes last week, all of our new cadets. Uh, and one of the things I told them was, you are going to face adversity here. And there are a couple of lessons you'll learn from that. They're the lessons I learned. One is, if you band together as a team to face those adversities together, you'll be much more successful. Uh, and I've applied that for 36 years uh, since I arrived here at Valley Forge, that if I try to take on a challenge individually, uh, I might succeed, but I'll succeed much more quickly and effectively if I'm doing it with a team. And the other thing I shared with them is that when you get through this thing called plebe system or plebe training, which lasts about 30 days, you will be sure at the end of it that there's nothing you can't do in life if you set your mind to it and work hard. Interesting. Set your mind to it and work hard. Uh, those are very good values and lessons to pass on. Now, you've obviously set your mind to things and worked hard to achieve it. And one of the questions I have for you is, uh, as president now, in reflecting on your career, mm -hmm. have there been key positions that you've assumed in the past? Uh, for instance, you've taught, uh, and I noticed that in your resume at Indiana University in, in Pennsylvania. I did. And uh, you've also uh, done other things that could be connected to teaching, not just leadership. Mm -hmm. So could you yourself identify maybe for me and for the audience, uh, some things that contributed to making you the choice as the new president of Valley Forge Military? Sure. Um, I think throughout my career, I, I've learned a couple of things, uh, gathered some skills, really in every position that, is, that have helped prepare me for Valley Forge. And one is, you mentioned it, when you're a leader in the military, you're expected all the time to be a teacher and a counselor and a mentor. Uh, it's, it's part of our responsibility to mentor and teach and counsel those who are coming up behind us. Uh, 
The other thing that I've learned throughout my career is adaptability. Uh, as a military officer, often you'll be assigned to positions for which you've really been trained, uh, technically trained, tactically trained. But just as often, you're put into positions where you have no training whatsoever. Uh, for instance, my first tour in Europe, I was working in international affairs, working with foreign militaries. I had zero training in international affairs, so I had to learn it on the run. Uh, so coming now to the world of academia, where I'm not professionally prepared or trained, uh, I'm not so intimidated because I've learned with each new job in the Army that I can go in, I can make an assessment, I can build a team, and I can work toward our common goals. If there's one position I could point to that has really prepared me well, that is uh, from 2012 to 13, I commanded the NATO headquarters in Sarajevo in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So when I arrived there, I had a headquarters of about 73 people from seven nations. Our main priority was advising the Ministry of Defense and the senior officers of the Bosnian Army. But I was partnered with another headquarters called European Union Force that was commanded by an Austrian general and had 15 or 16 nations within their headquarters. We were on the same base together. We lived and worked together on shared goals. It was a very politically charged environment, still is, in the Balkans, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And when I arrived, I was told by my commander that we really needed to forge a new path in achieving our goals, to look for different ways to accomplish what NATO arrived in Bosnia to do 20 years prior. Um, so there were actually some similarities when I arrived here certainly not politically charged, but with a bunch of different constituencies like parents, our, our customers, uh, our cadets, our faculty and staff, our very, very passionate alumni, um, and getting my arms around all those people and saying, we're on one team, here's our goal, let's talk about how we'll get there together. Uh, I think that job really prepared me well for that function. The other thing that I think prepared you well that I've observed during our interview is that you're very personable and uh, you neither, you're approachable regardless of your uh, very prestigious background. Uh, it doesn't seem to have gone to your head uh, as you communicate. So what helped you to I think, to assume increasing levels of leadership and accomplishment and yet stay grounded, not to let it all go to your head, as they say. Two things. Uh, one, a series of absolutely incredible mentors. From the time I was a very young officer, I've been blessed uh, with people who were senior to me in the military who've taken me under their wing and for some reason seen something in me that they wanted to help develop uh, and mentored me along the way. And most of them have been very humble people and they've ensured that they tried to instill that same level of humility in me. Uh, and second, my wife, Grace, uh, she keeps me humble. Uh, it's, it's Regardless of rank or position, I always knew that when I got home at the end of the day, I was no longer in charge. Uh, we joke about that, but there's some truth to it as well. Um, I talk a lot about teamwork and partnership, and, uh, and I, I have that kind of relationship with my wife. We are, we are a team. Uh, she has jumped into her role at Valley Forge as campus mom with both feet. Um, she is as passionate about Valley Forge as I am. We were married in the chapel at Valley Forge uh, six years after I graduated. So she sees this as home as well. Um, so she's not only a great partner, she's also a great check on, on my level of humility and she keeps me humble. Oh, that's great to hear. I'm sure she'll be happy to hear that when <laughs> she sees this interview. Uh, and also, as you were coming up uh, and reflecting about your uh, childhood, 
uh, adolescence. What about that period in your life? I use a, an architectural analogy when I talk about how I've gotten from kid in South Philly to Major General, recently retired president of an amazing institution. Uh, and I tell people that every bit of success I've enjoyed in life, especially my professional life, was built on a foundation that I established at Valley Forge. There's no question. But every builder or architect uh, worth their due will tell you that the strongest foundations are built into bedrock. And I tell people that my neighborhood, South Philadelphia, was my bedrock. Uh, you learn a, a grit and a toughness and a determination in a neighborhood like South Philadelphia. Uh, and if you learn the right way from that, you start to develop that attitude that I can do whatever I want to do in life if I set my mind to it and work hard. So I came here to Valley Forge in 1982, I think as a, a fairly decent molded piece of clay uh, that Valley Forge could mold into the leader I would ultimately become. Major General Lord, I want to thank you today so much for taking the time uh, to come and speak with us and sharing your insights and your goals for Valley Forge Military. Uh, I would love to, I'm sure that in the next couple of years we're going to see, uh, due to your influence and your perspectives, uh, a lot of positive movement at Valley Forge. Uh, to maintain their wonderful tradition. I think we will. I'm blessed to have an absolutely amazing team, and they're going to get us back to where we need to be. That's great. And to you, the audience, we want to thank you for taking the time to watch our televised interview today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.